Hi guys! Welcome back to another episode of Financial Accounting Tutorials. Do you want to know what investments are? Well, you are on the right video because in this video, we are going to discuss about investments. So, let's start. Investments is subdivided into three topics. We have investments measured at fair value, investments measured at amortized cost, and other long-term investments. However, in this video, we are only going to focus on investments measured at fair value. The other topics will be discussed on the following videos. To start our discussion on investments, we need to know what financial instruments are. Philippine Accounting Standards 32, Paragraph 11, defines a financial instrument as any contract that gives rise to a financial asset of one entity and a financial liability or an equity instrument of another entity. From the definition, the characteristics of a financial instrument are First, there must be a contract. Second, there are at least two parties to the contract. And lastly, the contract shall give rise to a financial asset of one party and financial liability or equity instrument of another party. Examples of financial instruments are cash in the form of notes and coins wherein it is a financial asset of the holder or bearer and a financial liability of the issuing government. Cash in bank wherein it is a financial asset of a depositor and a financial liability of the depository bank. Also, we have debt securities wherein this is a financial asset of the investor and a financial liability of the issuer. And lastly, equity securities, wherein it is a financial asset of the investor and equity of the issuer. Thus, the term financial instruments encompasses a financial asset, a financial liability, and an equity instrument of another entity. It was mentioned in the definition that financial instruments give rise to a financial assets and financial liabilities of an entity. So what are these financial assets and financial liabilities? Financial asset. A financial asset is any asset that is cash, a contractual right to receive cash or exchange financial instruments with another entity under favorable conditions, or non-derivative where entity is obliged to receive variable number of its own shares, and an equity instrument of another entity. In case of exchanges of financial instruments with another entity, Conditions are potentially favorable when such exchanges will result to gain or additional cash flow to the entity. Conversely, conditions are unfavorable when such exchanges will result to loss or additional cash outflow to the entity. Examples of financial assets are cash and cash equivalents like cash on hand, cash in banks, short-term money placements, and cash funds. Receivables like accounts receivables, notes receivables, loans receivables, and finance lease receivables. Investment in equity instruments of other entities like investments in associates and investments in subsidiaries. Investments in debt securities like investments in bonds and loans held for sale, sinking funds and other long-term funds composed of cash and other financial assets, and cash surrender value of life insurance. Now we move on to financial liability. A financial liability, on the other hand, is any liability that is a contractual obligation to deliver cash or other financial assets to another entity and to exchange financial instruments with another entity under conditions that are potentially unfavorable or non-derivative where entity is obliged to deliver variable number of its own share. A contractual obligation to exchange under potentially unfavorable conditions is an option written or issued by the issuer to sell shares in a specified entity at less than market price. This contractual obligation is a financial liability. Examples of financial liabilities are payables like accounts payables, notes payables, loans payables, and bonds payables, finance lease obligations, liabilities held for trading, redeemable present shares issued, and security deposits. Now that we're done with the introduction about financial instruments, let us straight off move on a bit more detail about investments at fair value. For that, financial assets are classified as either financial assets at amortized cost or financial assets at fair value. 
financial assets measured at their value are subclassified into investments in equity securities measured at fair value through other comprehensive income, financial assets measured at fair value through profit or loss in which it is also further subdivided into financial assets designated at fair value through profit or loss and held for trading securities. Let us first start with financial assets at fair value. Financial assets designated at fair value through profit or loss and held for trading securities composes of debt or equity securities and they are classified as current assets in the statement of financial position. Their initial recognition is at fair value since the transaction cost is expensed immediately. Its subsequent measurement is also at fair value and the subsequent changes in fair value are recognized in profit or loss as either unrealized gain or unrealized loss. Investments in equity securities at fair value through other comprehensive income only compose of equity securities. It is classified as current or non-current assets depending on the period they are expected to be realized. Its initial recognition is at fair value plus transaction costs, while its subsequent measurement is at fair value. The subsequent changes in fair value of investment in equity securities at fair value through other comprehensive income are recognized in other comprehensive income. Lastly, we have the financial asset as amortized cost. They are only composed of debt securities and it is also classified as current or non-current asset. Its initial recognition is also at fair value plus transaction cost and the subsequent changes is at amortized cost. And like others, the subsequent changes in fair value of financial assets that are measured at amortized cost are not recognized or ignored unless the financial assets are impaired. After going into how financial assets are classified at amortized cost and fair value with their according initial and subsequent measurements as well as how changes in their fair values are accounted, let us now proceed with the requirements of fair value measurement. Let us first define fair value. PFRS fair value measurement defines fair value as the price that would be received to sell an asset or pay to transfer a liability in an orderly transaction between market participants at the measurement date. PFRS 13 indicates that when measuring fair value, the following must be considered. First is the asset or liability being measured, including its condition, location, and any restrictions on sale or use of the asset. The characteristics of a particular asset or liability may affect its fair value measurement. Second is the principal or most advantageous market in which an orderly consumption would take place for the asset or liability. Fair value measurement requires assumptions based on current market conditions. The entity must have access to the principal or most advantageous market but not necessarily the ability to sell the asset or transfer the liability on the measurement date to be able to measure fair value on the basis of the price in that market. So guys, now, now that we have defined financial instruments and fair value, let us now proceed with investment. So what are investments? Okay, investments are assets held by an entity for their recreation wealth through distribution such as interest, royalties, dividends, for capital appreciation or for other benefits to the investigating entity such as those obtained through trading relationship. These assets are directly identified with the operating activities of an entity and occupy only an auxiliary relationship to the central revenue and producing activities of the entity. In a simple sense, investments are things that, that a company is willing to give up for a future benefit, be it cash or material property. Awesome word. Okay. The term investment can be defined broadly as assets that are held for the following purpose, which are the following. Okay, so first, to earn profit, to secure certain operating or financing arrangement or beneficial relationship with another entity, to meet business requirements or to serve as protection for possible future loss. So, okay, profit may be derived from help for trading securities, financial asset designated at FBPL or the fair value to profit or loss, 
Investment in equity securities measured at, at FBOCI or the fair value to other comprehensive income. Investment in debt securities measured at amortized cost. Investment in equity securities measured at cost. And lastly, investment property. So the beneficial relationship with another entity may also derive from investment in associates were in significant influence over the investee is obtained, investment in subsidiary were in control over the investee is obtained, and investment in joint venture were in joint control over the investee is obtained. And lastly, investment made to serve as protection from possible future loss. So guys, contingency or insurance fund similarly serves to serve as protection from further losses due to disruption of normal operation. Cash surrenders, value on life insurance to compensate loss of service in case and ultimately death of key employee and certain derivatives designated as hedging instruments for managing financial risk. <laughs> so now guys, let's solve some sample problems. On January 1, 20x1, ABC Co. purchased 12,000 shares of XYZ Inch for 100,000 pesos. The commission paid to broker amounted to 5,000 pesos. The equity securities were designated by management to be measured at fair value through profit or loss. So, how can we record this acquisition? Let us first put into mind that financial instruments designated at fair value through profit or loss is initially measured at fair value. So we have the journal entry at January 1, 20x1, which is a debit to financial asset designated at fair value to profit or loss amounted to 100,000 pesos. And commission expense of 5,000 pesos and credit to cash in bank, which is 105,000 pesos. Then on December 31, 20x1, the shares are quoted at 10 pesos per share. It was estimated that transaction cost of 50 centavos per share will be incurred if the shares were sold on that date. The entry to record the fair value changes on December 31, 20x1 is a debit to financial asset designated at fair value to profit or loss of 20,000 pesos and a credit to unrealized gain of 20,000 pesos. Okay, we got the value 20,000 pesos by deducting the fair value at 120,000 pesos from the carrying amount at 100,000 pesos. The estimation on transaction cost is ignored because investment in fair value through profit or loss are subsequently measured at fair value and not at fair value less cost to sell. After that, on January 3, 20x2, all of the 12,000 shares were sold at 15 pesos per share. Commission paid for the sale amounted to 6,000 pesos. So the entry guys is sale at January 3, 20x2 is a debit to cash on hand amounted to 174,000 pesos which is computed as 12,000 shares multiplied by 15 pesos and a credit to financial assets designated at fair value through profit or loss which is 120,000 pesos and realized gained on sale at 54,000 pesos which is computed as Sale price at 12,000 pesos share multiplied by 15 pesos minus commission paid on the sale which is at 6,000 pesos. So then it is deducted to the carrying amount of investment at December 31, 20x1 at 120,000 pesos which gives us a total of 54,000 pesos. Okay, now let's have another problem regarding trading securities. On January 1, 2013, an entity purchased marketable equity securities for 5 million. The equity securities qualify as financial asset held for trading. The entity also paid 50,000 pesos as commission to the broker. So the entry will be at January 1, 2013 is a debit to trading securities amounted to 5 million pesos and commission expense which is at 50,000 pesos and a credit to cash at 5,050,000 pesos. The commission paid is not capitalized as cost of the investment but treated as outright expense. 
Then, on December 31, 2013, the trading securities have a fair value of 6 million. The increase in value at December 31, 2013 is recorded as a debit to trading securities of 1 million pesos and then a credit to unrealized gain of 1 million pesos. The amount in trading securities is computed by subtracting the fair value of 6 million pesos, the carrying amount of 5 million pesos. Okay guys, to continue, on December 31, 2014, the trading securities have a fair value of 4,500,000 pesos. The decrease in fair value at December 31, 2014 is recorded as a debit to unrealized loss in a credit to trading securities amounted to 1,500,000 pesos. The unrealized loss is reported in the income statement as other expense. Lastly, on December 31, 2015, the trading securities are sold for 5,200,000 pesos. The sale is simply recorded by debiting cash which is 5,200,000 pesos and crediting trading securities at 4,500,000 pesos which is the fair value at December 31, 2014 and gain on sale of trading securities at 700,000 pesos. There you have it guys, everything you want to know about investment measure the fair value. I hope that this video will help you a lot. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button below. Oh my God. <laughs>